May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So Jesus speaks two parables in the gospel lesson for today. Um, and a parable is a story or an image that Jesus uses to try to show us what God is like or what the kingdom of God is like, the realm of God is like, where people are actually feeling and living out the love of God. Often we will get meanings and lessons from parables. For example, in the parable that comes before the gospel lesson for today, uh, Jesus tells a story about a farmer who throws the seed in all directions. Whee! Shavoo, shavoo, go all the seeds everywhere. And some of them fall on the thorny soil. And uh, Jesus says about the thorny soil, he says to the disciples later on, the thorny soil is like when, when you get scared and you're afraid and uh, the fear crawls up around you and strangles you so that you don't feel the compassion of God for anyone. You're only thinking about yourself. And oh, it's so sad. We have to be so cruel and brutal to these people when they're such a terrible threat to us, those people over there who are terrible to us. And so we forget the love of God. Or we're just too busy to be bothered. Jesus says that the Seeds fall among the thorns. Or else, maybe they fall in the rocky soil where everybody's all gung-ho for Jesus and you're all charged up for Jesus. But then when hard times come, like if you lose your job or there's a problem in your relationships or you get sick or you do something you're embarrassed that you did, then you kind of just fade away and quit. There's no roots to it. Jesus says that that soil is is sort of like when that happens to us. So we have various kinds of meanings and morals and uh, lessons that we learn from the parables. But the parables are more than just meanings and morals and lessons. They are more than Aesop's fable with a moral to it. The parables are designed specifically and intentionally to confound us, to disorient us, to turn our worlds upside down into a hope that we had not conceived of, a love that is beyond our ability to understand or manipulate or control toward the presence of God, in other words. So one of the best known parables out there is the story of the Good Samaritan that Jesus tells, you know. And the Good Samaritan really turns the world upside down for people because in Jesus' day, there was no such thing as a Good Samaritan. All the Samaritans were bad. It was a contradiction in terms to say Good Samaritan. Yet Jesus tells a story about a Samaritan, ew, a Samaritan, that does the right thing. Another favorite parable is the story of the prodigal son, where the son goes out and he wastes half of his father's money on all kinds of stupid things like getting drunk and sex workers and wild parties and stuff like that. And, and only when he has run out of money and when he is starving to death does he haul his sorry mangy hide back to daddy. And the father sees him from far away and he runs, runs to his son. Now in Jesus' day, when you were the dad, when you were the father, you did not run. You would walk with dignity. You would pace with purpose. You did not hike up your robes and let your knees flap in the wind like some kind of lackey. You didn't do that. That was foolish and silly, but God runs to us. God is foolish and silly, so enamored and eager to forgive. Parables turn our heads around. Even the parable of the farmer that is in uh, the verses before the gospel lesson for today. There's this farmer throwing seed in all directions. Who's ever farmed? Yeah. Do you waste your seed? 
Do you put it on stupid, thorny soil, on rocky? You don't do, no, no farmer then or these days will ever do it. It is a foolish thing. It's a ridiculous way to farm. You don't garden that way. And yet God goes, woo, woo, throwing the grace of God and the love of God and the hope of God in all directions on all people, all people, the thorny soil people and the rocky soil people and even you and me. Oh, how preposterous. It turns the head around. In the gospel lesson for today, Jesus points out how the parables bring us to the edge of our understanding. It's kind of like in Zen Buddhism, uh, they have something called a koan that is designed to tell you that what we're talking about here is beyond our ability to conceive. And a koan is a, a little phrase that you're supposed to think about all day. And one of the phrases that's well known is, what is the sound of one hand clapping? Okay, so you sit there and think all day, and you're not supposed to come up with the sound of one hand clapping. You're supposed to realize that these things are bigger than we are. And in Zen, Buddhism is supposed to take you to the edge of, of a peace, to the edge of incomprehensibility, to the mystery of life, to the edge of emptiness. Well, Jesus tells the parables to bring us to the edge of God. Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like and someone plants a seed in the ground. And you go home, you go to bed, you get up, you do some other stuff, you go back to bed, you get up, go back to bed, one day after another, and that seed ah, grows. You don't know how it grows. It's like a miracle. Even nowadays, we, we, can, we can describe the process of photosynthesis whereby plants convert sunlight and air and water and minerals into leaves and stems and roots, but it's still a wonder when your tomatoes start to come up, when your flowers bloom, when you look up at a tree and you see those tiny little leaves springing out into something new. That's what God is like. And then Jesus stands there kind of wondering to himself. He says, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? And what parable will we use for it? Oh, I know. It's like if someone plants a mustard seed in the ground. Wait a minute. A mustard seed? Jesus! Nobody plants mustard seed. It's like planting kudzu in your yard. It's like planting dandelion seeds. Woo, dandelion seeds. Woo, in all directions. Mustard was a weed. Oh, an invasive weed. It would spring up here. It would spring up here. It would spring up over here. You try to get rid of it. You try to pull it up. You put all kinds of poison on it. You try to persecute it, and it, and it still comes back. That's what the kingdom of heaven is like. Yes, indeed. Now, in this parable, uh, Jesus is referring to Hebrew scripture in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel the prophet is speaking to the people of Israel who are in captivity in Babylon. They are in exile. And God says to the people of Israel, I will take the top of a tree and I will plant it over here. And it will become a huge, noble, beautiful tree, and the birds of the air will make nests in its branches, and that's what you're going to be like. And Jesus says, well, the kingdom of heaven maybe isn't quite so tall and noble and, 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 and auspicious. The kingdom of heaven is more like a weed, and you try to get rid of it, the love of God, and the beauty of God, and the hope of God, and the laughter of God. You try to... Mm, try to get rid of it, you might even persecute it, you might want to throw it out, and it still keeps popping up and popping up and popping up and popping up. And it makes things that you can't really sell, you know, like good crops, you might sell your crops or you'd store your crops for the winter. Mustard seed, not so much, but what, what it does do <clears throat> is it makes a place for the birds of the air to live. It makes a home where we can
That's what God is like. Maybe not so fancy, but a place where we can be. I'll tell you a parable that I have seen in my life that turns my head around every single time, disorients me with the joy and the depth and the laughter of God. And that parable is being a dad. Being a dad carries me to the edge of my understanding, to things that I will never be able to conceive of or uh, define or manipulate or control. Like one day when my daughter Abby was, I mean, she wasn't even three years old, and I was taking a nap on the couch, and the sun was coming in through a window in the living room, and I woke up and I saw her walk across the living room floor through the sunlight. And I said, I can die now. I, I don't want to die. You know, I, I like being alive. It's fun. But I've seen it. I've seen the beauty of God. And then some years later, uh, I was looking out um, our kitchen window and I saw my son Isaac, and he was involved in a very serious squirt gun war. Um, and he comes flying. I mean, honestly, his feet were not touching the ground. <laughs> flying through the backyard, he had a super squirter uh, gun in his hand, a two-handed super squirter gun. He was flying to get the advantage on the enemy. And oh, it was glorious. It was beautiful. It was, oh, it was the realm of God. Yes, yes. And, and, then, and then one other time, my son Micah, um, Thine had gone on a trip. And so she was going to come back soon. And so he made a Rube Goldberg machine, which a Rube Goldberg machine is one of those things where you see where it's a contraption. And you roll, you roll the marble down the marble run, and it hits the toothbrush, and the toothbrush falls over on the spinny thing, and the spinny thing spins around and opens up the cat door, and then uh, it lets the food go from the cat into the cat into the cat's bowl. And that's how you feed the cat, right? With this elaborate contraption of one thing doing another. Well, he made a Rube Goldberg machine. Uh, but this time, it, you roll the marble down the marble run and knocked over the toothbrush and it made the spinny thing go around. And instead of opening up the door for the cat food, it released a helium balloon that was attached to the floor and it floated up to the ceiling, and as Thine walked in the door from her trip, up went the helium balloon and said, Welcome home, Mom. Yes. Spin your head around. Spin your head around with the wonder and the love of God. So one more parable. And that's you. That's you the love of God that comes through you. Because all of our loves, and I can speak this from personal experience as a dad, my love is not enough, and my love is not perfect. My love is broken and fallen, but the love of God takes my love and makes it into a part of itself so that we are all a part of the wonder of God. And the care that you all show for the youth and children of this congregation whether you are a parent or not, is a wonder. And when you all show care for each other and compassion for the world, you are a parable that takes me to the edge of my understanding. Thanks be to God.